Hey guys, uh, we're back with another player interview. Uh, this time we have Minus with us. Say hi. Yeah. Uh, How's and it going? Doing well. How are you doing, Minus? I'm not too bad. Just kind of loving, loving the cooler weather for sure. Yeah. So, Minus, how did you? So, well, I'm I'm referring to you at, with your character name, but uh, I believe. Uh, of course, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, this is Curtis. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Hello. And I'm then, Curtis. and then, how did you come around to LARPing in general, Curtis? So I started LARPing about ten years ago. Uh, my first LARP that I got into was actually Dagger here. Yeah. Um, same we, here. Yeah. 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 Uh, I think actually you and I started. Like the same chapter because yeah, Northern we have steps. a local chapter. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a local chapter around here in Fort Wayne, and I worked at a comic book store at that time. And uh, there were some guys there that went and played. They weren't super big into it, but I went and I started and got super, super interested in it and never really looked back. Yep. Same here, man. Like, I, it was such a fun, like, Dagger here you know, feels more like a sport than it does a LARP, but it's, it's just, a, mm -hmm. it's like a gateway drug to LARPing <laughs> for a lot of yeah, people. Oh, for sure. Yeah. No, the, the way that I always explain dagger here to people is it's basically paintball with swords. Yeah. That's a really good way of putting it. Like, cause like paintball, you don't really have a story, but you're like doing the, you know, you're doing like the essence of the wacky bats you know like right well not only that but there's like capture the flag and king of the hill and you play all those game kinds modes. Of games in dagger here as well yeah like where larp doesn't so, have a game mode it, but like dagger here does right yes so i i did that for about five four four years took a small break um got kind of as i got a little bit older i'm like man if i get hurt since it's full contact so then I moved. I played Nero for one game. Um, How that was, was that? Okay. Like I, I looked. I was, that was like the first system yeah. I ever like looked up at, and I was like, "This is interesting." But yeah, I, I never found a Nero bad. near us. Yeah, no, it was it was not near us. It was up in Michigan, I believe. I rode with a couple of people, and it was okay. Um, I was still pretty young and it was a little it was nice to get into a game that you're role playing and stuff it kind of led me into being more interested in other groups but so i did that and then i ended up playing carps for about five years uh where while i was playing that i actually uh was one of the gms for a year and i was on staff back and forth oh that's pretty cool and i like just, that's yeah. be, being part of leadership in a LARP really opens your eyes to a lot of how LARPs go down, honestly. Oh, oh, for sure. So yeah, I was a I was a storyteller for that. So um, ran a whole lot of different events and all that kind of stuff. I've ran some events solo and with groups, and now I'm playing Shifted Lands. Nice. Yeah, and then uh, so w what particularly introduced you to Shifted Lands? Like, was there an individual, or did you just find it online? Um, my buddy Seth has been playing for years and years and years. And of course it's Seth. Who doesn't know yeah, Seth? It, I know. It's, <laughs> it's actually Seth and Matt Miley. Oh, Matt, dude, Matt Miley's a nice guy. I've had the chance to yeah, talk no. with him a bunch of times. Oh, yeah, no, I've, I've known him for years and years and years. Um, he was playing Shifted Lands back when I first met him, and we, he and I talked about that. That was when I was still playing Dagger here. So I was always Yeah, he used to be a dad guy too, didn't he? Yes. I think he was um, not. He, he wasn't was... like a full-on player, but he was like c tangentially connected in the community. Like yes. Yeah. Yeah. There. So if you are in any of the LARP community around uh, Fort Wayne and stuff, you end up knowing, knowing... Seth. And... <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Like honestly. So, but no, he, Seth, Seth was the one who was kind of like, hey, you should come play this. And Matt was like 100%. And uh, I, I, I didn't for a year. And then um, this year, I was kind of like, you know what? It's 30 minutes from where I live. So I might as, I don't know why I wasn't doing it already. So <laughs> yeah, started playing and I love it, man. It's, yeah. it's a great game. The drive from Columbia City or from Fort Wayne to Columbia City is like really nice, honestly. Like it's right, it's sure. so convenient for us. 
I feel yeah, I'm sure the Michigan we're... people don't feel that's the same way, but we also don't feel the same way about driving <laughs> to Michigan. Oh, exactly. Yeah, that's that's kind of why I switched to is the three and a half hour drive. Like it's a great camp. They have a wonderful camp. It's super awesome. Oh, I love that camp. Um, the one time I've the I've been there twice, and I love the camp out there that they played mm-hmm. with. Yeah, that's the camp that Carps moved to. So I've been on that site quite a bit. Um, so it's a really nice site. It's just three and a half hours away. So <laughs> yeah. Playing one that's thirty minutes away sounded so much nicer. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Minus and how far he's gotten in the game? Sure. So Minus, I'll, I'll kind of preface with like my initial idea of what I was thinking. Sure. So at his base, he's just a, a huge meat wall that that like hits real hard. Because all I wanted to be able to stand on the front line, take a bunch of hits and then give a bunch of hits back and really because my my last character was a super utility support character like he could do some fighting and stuff but my main thing was just, i had a billion utility buffing abilities and stuff yeah so i would like help those around me um but then also like he was pretty he was involved in like the underworld and stuff like that so my dude was super shady so i thought that this time around it'd be really fun to just play a dude who wants to help just for the sake of helping anyone around him who needs it he's like i got you i'm there um and then can roll in and i basic more or less i can play wacky bat yeah right (laughs) and wacky bat Um, at shifted lands is a pretty fun game to be honest like yeah it's it's a very fun combat system and then Um, um what there's a very unique thing about minus that uh, a lot of people notice as soon as they interact with him yeah, um, he doesn't speak. He does not uh, speak. Yeah, he doesn't talk at all. Um, I also try and avoid uh, making any sort of noises. Like, I don't grunt or anything like that. When I, I've, I've actually learned to uh, laugh with my lungs instead of with my vocal box. Oh, that's uh, interesting. So, yeah, and it's, it's basically like, you know, it's, I'm pushing the air out of my body in a laughing manner um to the, just to like show people that i'm in like when somebody says something funny i want to be like no that i thought that was funny but i can't say it the role play um, runs so, deep <laughs> yeah um and the only way because the only way that he could talk is i carry a chalkboard and chalk around with me and i write so if i can't mime something out i grab out the chalkboard and which I you're damn good down. at doing by the way you're damn yeah. good at that game <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and that's kind of why I thought it would be fun. Um, it's also, it's it's a little bit half and half of why I chose to do that. One, I thought it would be a super fun role play challenge. There was a character at Carps who didn't speak for a while, um, and he was really good at the charades as well. And I always admired that character setup. I was like, oh, that's <laughs> so cool. Eventually, I want to do that. So I saw the opportunity. Yeah. But actually, the other reason that I that I chose to not speak is because I am on the autism spectrum. So sometimes uh. it is hard for me to like it, it's hard for me to sometimes do the backwards math, especially if I'm playing a character who is very much not in my like gamer mindset. Because you know, you walk into a room with a bunch of bandits and the the murder hobo gamer instinct is we'll, we'll just kill them and take anything that's not bolted down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so since I'm playing a guy who's uh, like I, last game uh, minus quote unquote spoke with a uh, like super if not the top tier ranking paladin of the game's paladin order. Oh, you got to meet Jetta, didn't you? Yes, I did. I, uh, <laughs> I got to stand there and, and have a uh, conversation with Jedit. For those of you who up... have seen our previous or who haven't seen our previous player interviews, we've interviewed Jedit because Jedit used to be a long-standing character, and now he's a NPC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he 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 came in after we did a whole bunch of really cool stuff and kind of came in to check on the town and stuff like that. But, but while he was in, minus informed him through a little bit of the help of um 
uh, I'm still learning character names. She is the bunny beast person oh, who that's... is a sun paladin. That is Anya, and that was Jedit Squire too, actually. So that's probably she probably okay. knew Jedit enough to like kind of get the message across to. That's that's mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, that is. Uh, yeah, that was Jedit's uh, Squire. She's now a full paladin, of course. Cool. Yeah. She man, I love her costume and character. Dude, it's, it's such so a good, good. Landsneck Bunny. Oh, it's it. such a good character. I know. Every time, every time I see her, I'm like, I go. Oh, it's like my favorite costume that I've seen in games so far. But, um, so she, she intru- uh, like helped get the message across that, um, Minus wanted to join the Paladin Order as a man-at-arms. So, like, I'm not necessarily looking to get the Paladin Augment. I'm more just, he, uh, like, Minus' backstory was he was a soldier. Um, he was human on a planet oh. that did not have any magic. Um, and the reason that he is a flesh golem is he took a mortal throat wound. Uh, that's the next question, and, actually, was why did you pick your race? So that, that goes into this, so keep going. Yes, so he took a mortal throat wound um, and went, wand- like, the the combat was over, he was dying, um, kind of, like, blearily wandered into the forest where the uh, mist scooped him up, turned him into a flesh golem, and dumped him into town. Basically. Oh, so like if he hadn't taken that wound, he would have just been a regular flesh golem that could quote unquote talk. But then because uh, that, of that, that or yeah, actually, in my mind, he probably would have been changed into something more like a human. He might have just been still human. But the it more or less because he was on like he was seconds from dying, and then he got like hence the flesh cured golem. almost hence yeah. the flesh so he, golem. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. The he was like pieced back together by the mist and now he's alive and that's also one reason why he has such a like i'm going to defend everyone around me kind of drive is because he almost lost his life and now he has a second chance because of the mist and becoming a flesh golem it's why when people are like hey do you want to not be a flesh golem anymore we can do that he's like no 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 like i want to be a flesh golem (laughs) yeah it's i'm just for a reason i'm way more capable of protecting people now but I'm going to stay this and just continue to do my best to protect everyone around. That's super cool. That's like a really good, uh, that's so cool how you tied your, like your racial, uh, pick into your like backstory. Like you gave it a a really good reason that meshed with your backstory. I know a lot of people that just like, yeah, this looked cool. (laughs) I picked it. (laughs) No, for sure. Well, that was kind of like where I was at first. Like I was for sure just like, well, I want to be like a a, a wall with a a hammer that I'm just going to smack smack people with. And um, very effective. I was looking at Flesh Golem. Yeah, oh, for sure. Oh, I wear... 40 to 60 pounds of armor and carry a two-handed club so people come up and smack 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 and i turn around and go all right cool bam that's half your health (laughs) yeah minus's character kit is very cool looking it's definitely one yeah it's definitely like it's up there like for me it's up there with anya i know that you're the one rocking it so like it's hard to compare that, uh, yeah. but like, but <laughs> like you're up sure. there with Anya's kit for me too. I'm I have no, recently I... purchased some pauldrons and a gorget exclusively because I loved your costuming, and I was like, I need to try to, like, uh, oh, well, yeah, Arthur man. Arthur can't wear armor, so my my next character is gonna come in soon. But I was just I was so oh. inspired. I was like, that looks so cool. Yeah. Oh, that's super cool. I like that a lot. That's 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 awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, I like the way that it looked a lot. One thing that you'll learn really fast is how, how heavy it gets really oh, fast. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very lucky I like bought a, a mantle. Uh, it was a Gambeson mm-hmm. mantle to rock it, and that takes a lot of – that distributes a lot of the weight for me. Yes, yes, it does. Um, it uh, With how much armor I wear, I'm actually really thankful that I bought a giant war belt because that acts as a back brace. So when I'm running around with all this weight on top of my torso and stuff, it distributes it mostly into my hips, mm. um, which is it's same concept of when you're wearing chain mail, you put a you belt over it and then you like raise your shoulders up and drop it because it instantly drops all the weight from your shoulders to your hips. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah. So I, I've been 
Like I said, I've been LARPing for like 10 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it down. So that's interesting. So you've been LARPing for 10 years, and then you're like fairly new to Shifted Lands. So what has your experience mm -hmm. been as a, and like this might be an, op like, so the people I've interviewed so far have all been veterans of this game per se. They've all been, um, I think Arden was the newest guy I've interviewed, and he, but he was at, he's about at the two year mark, two year plus. And right. you're well within your first year still, I think. Oh, for, I've I've been to four games. <laughs> yeah, four <laughs> games total. So then, what is your so at, for the new people playing, um, who are maybe listening to this, what mm -hmm. has your experience with Shifted Lands been so far as somebody who's like right at that beginner level, in in for the right. game at least. Oh, for sure. Um, my biggest takeaway immediately was how everyone really gets along really well like i do not notice any actual like click groups which i have noticed in bigger larps there's always like this group hangs out over here this group hangs out here over here they sometimes intermingle but mostly they do their own things together i haven't really noticed that um I know that there's like factions and stuff, so that's that's entirely there's different. Like, there's like um, houses and like houses hang out with each other, but that's just because they're doing like house stuff. You know, it's not right. they're not excluding anybody when they're doing stuff like that for the most part. It's like, well, we're gonna do house stuff, so I mean, it it makes sense that we're only doing stuff with house people at this particular moment. Oh, for sure. You know, no, absolutely. Stuff stuff like that, I completely understand. It makes perfect sense it works within the game, it works within the world. Um. It's completely different when like outside friend groups are inside friend groups like of, like in game their friends are like their their characters are best friends because they're best friends out of game and it starts to feel kind of like well I'm an outsider. This doesn't it just I have not noticed any of that in shifted. It's super cool. Everybody is very welcoming and nice and helpful and um, everybody seems to really genuinely enjoy the game as a whole. Um, the combat I enjoy. It's not super complicated. Uh, I enjoy the um, damage call. So like when you first get your weapons and stuff, the base call is like a lot of damage. So like I swing currently 15. So 15 damage. Uh, it's actually 15 silver for me now because that's a pretty good super, base super swing. Awesome. That's that flesh golem oh, for, strength. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's that and a thing that happened my second game we were messing with a box full of wild magic and it ended up giving me plus four strength oh oh wow so you're rocking like is it flesh golems or like plus six or something i have 10 strength naturally 14 strength with the special oh my gosh and then on so top of a base I, four weapon that's nuts yeah i walked into game with 10 strength <laughs> yeah that's pretty dang good like a lot of people don't ever get higher than like the, the two or the four that they get that's pretty yeah, awesome. So, yeah, yeah. That's, I've been rocking that. For anybody um, who's it, thinking about playing Flesh Golem, it is a very good choice. Like, it's a very, um, it's very it fun is. to have that level of strength too. Because a lot of people get into the role play of like, oh, I have ten strength. What can I do with this? And it's like, instead of like killing blow one, they'll be like, I rip your body open one. I rip your like, I tear you limb from limb. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I I have definitely definitely like launch things off of the battlefield so like an npc will go down and their body's laying there and i'm like 10 strength i put you into the woods <laughs> yeah. Woo! yeah off goes the the mist beetle <laughs> yeah which is that's oh man yeah that's literally that was like my first mist experience as a nullophidian my first mist experience i like killed a mist beetle and then they were like no 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 don't don't like killing blow it you just shunt it off to the mist for as a nullophidian specifically like we mm -hmm. care about mist beetles so we shunt them off to the mist instead of killing blowing them most of the time right so they can be like reincorporated yeah like reabsorbed or some That's shit cool. like that so yeah i love i love the role play of that so we've talked a bit about your character but what is the archetype that you think that you're fitting into with your character or what do you try to portray particularly with minus um, I am really trying to make him into, like, a living citadel of defense for the team. Just ask me. Like, there's not anybody specific. And it's kind of why I, I'm, I'm moving towards making him into a, uh, a sentinel. Oh. oh, a sentinel. Uh, 
yeah, and that's kind of I'm leaning more towards that rather than like bodyguard has to be by the description of everything with the skills and stuff. Bodyguard is I protect this one person really, really well, and that's not really where I see minus at. I, minus is like I'm going to protect as many people as I possibly can by putting my own life on the line. Yeah, and that's like that's definitely right within Sentinel, like what Sentinel mm-hmm. does. That's so cool. Yeah. So he's definitely um, like D and D paladin in in like behave like behavior, not necessarily like you know the religion and all that stuff. And as I said, I don't really want to go paladin augment with him, but he is definitely like it is the right thing to do is to protect those who can't, and to when you go into battle with those around you, you do everything in your power to make sure that those people come out of battle. Yeah. It, like, yeah. And that's, like, one of the cool things was you were talking about how, like, you talked to a big paladin guy, and you wanted to, quote-unquote, join the paladins, but you didn't want to be a paladin augment. And I think... Mm-hmm. I don't I don't think you're the first person to do that, but you're the first person to do that in a while. And it's cool, because it's never been an expect... like. A lot of people assume that to join the Paladin Order, you have to be Paladin Augment, but that's completely out right. of the case. Like, they'll take anybody who's willing to uphold the oath. It's just a matter mm-hmm. of, like, a lot of people do that and then think they have to play Paladin. But no, you can just take the oath and join them at, like, what you're doing as a man-at-arms. Mm-hmm. Um, Correct. And you're just as much of the Paladin Order as another guy who's playing Augment Paladin. Right, for sure. And it's like, I I can see how, because from, from what my understanding, um, the first thing that Minus did when he came into town was ask, does the town have a town guard? And there was, a, a, he was given a spiel about how there was, it's in some ways more than others not worked out for the town, so they kind of just, everybody just helps each other, and it's like a fend for yourself sort of thing, uh, more or less. Yeah. Uh, so the next thing was, where is the nearest army? Because in his... You know, previous life, he was a soldier, and so being a soldier is all he knows. A duty, So he's like, yeah, so he's like, I want to follow an army that's doing good. Uh, And the Paladin Order was what he was pointed towards, and he's talked with some of the Paladins and really vibes with the, like, yeah, if when there's bad stuff, we take that bad stuff out before it hurts good people. And so he's all for it. Hell yeah. So... And this question was kind of pointed towards... um, This one doesn't fit super well for Minus, I'd say. Um, The question Mm. would be, what's an arc that you're proud of participating in with your character? But you're on your, like, fifth game. So it's it's hard to have... To draw upon an experience of, oh, I've gone through this crazy arc where I did X, Y, and Z. Right. Well, I've had some, like, small, uh, like plot to plot kind of of moments where i was really like oh that went awesome um one of which that i've actually gotten some people telling me that they like witnessed it and were really uh i thought it was super awesome um was we uh, like a, a group of us went and took on a land shark which is basically like a giant shark like not megalodon size necessarily but not great white shark size um that burrow around through the grounds like through the sand and stuff yeah and so we went up against that and there were a bunch of small ones they're like sharks that swim through sand and they're also kind of like insecty as opposed to sharky but yeah keep going super creepy super cool like i that 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 creature is awesome but what uh what ended up happening is they have an ability called sever limb so they just come up and chomp your arm off um i got or leg or wherever it hit those you. things are so damn I, scary <laughs> terrifying me yeah they are oh my gosh so i was i'm a two-handed weapon fighter which means i need both my left and right arms to fight and i was fighting against one of the smaller uh land sharks and it hit me in the arm with a separate limb so it took my arm clean off and i didn't have any defenses to stop it so uh, my, I lost my right arm, and then they said, hey, just as a heads up, you cannot use your weapon 
Yeah, you have to have both hands arm, on like, a two-handed weapon, unfortunately. Yeah. So and you can't even, you can't block, even with block with it. With it. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's actually been and and block shots. there's been some discussion about uh or well I actually suggested that like having a specialization because there's this weird mechanic in the game called proficiencies. I don't know if you've had the chance to see those. I am a two-handed weapon. Oh, uh, so you have I a believe that is a specialty. No, like a proficiency. Uh, so it's literally oh, okay. like a ten build skill that just says I get plus one damage to this weapon. Or this. Yes. Oh, I, ha I yes, I have that. So I, I, I am a weapon master. Say that one more time. I didn't quite catch you there. I I have I do have that ability for two-handed weapons. Like I have the the ten build plus one to two-handed specifically. Oh yeah, cool. So my thought process, I like suggested that like if you have this specialization, that like maybe well for in my particular example, I suggested it on staffs. Um, mm -hmm. but I was like, hey, if you have a proficiency in this, maybe that's what lets you block with one hand. But that, like, that's still in the talking stages, and there's some people that are like, right. that's too busted, or that's blah blah. And that, you know, that's up for plot marshals to decide. Um, right, and like that's, that's understandable. I get like I, I 100% get both sides of the conversation with it. But yeah. at the at the time, I so I, I lose my arm, can't block, can't do anything with my weapon. So my brain was, well, if I if I can't hit, the other thing I'm good at is protecting and being, like, a meat wolf. So I started actually physically putting myself in between land sharks and people who were not paying attention. So uh, there was a point where somebody got downed and drug over to one of the healers, and the healer was turned and uh, uh, using healing magic on the person. Well, actually, I think they were doing first aid stuff. Um, but they were paying attention to that. And a land shark comes rolling up on her, and so I threw myself between her and the land shark, and took so much damage I actually died. Oh wow! <laughs> like, I went, I went into bleed out. Yeah. Um, Very so heroically. I, I shot. Yeah, it was. Well, it was like she's not paying attention. I can't hit. I can't say anything. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, because you're minus. Yeah. All you can do yeah, is clank so... aggressively at her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's what I'm trying to, it's like, I can't snap or clap or anything, so there was the, like, fastest reflexing I could do was get in the way, so I threw myself in, took that shot, hit the ground. Um, somebody, like, heard me hit the ground, yeah. turned, <laughs> killed the shark, and then the healer turned and got me back up, so I crawled back up, but I was still missing an arm. So what did I do? Started walking alongside land sharks, following where they were going, and when they started swinging, I put myself directly in the way, took more shots, and I turned around again. I think I went into yeah, five times. But I, I was, the whole time, it was just, who's not watching? Who's going to get hit? I'm going to take that hit instead. Yeah, and so then later on, people were like, hey, you were being, you were, I mean, that's totally what your character concept's about at that point. Like, being a meat wall, and you're playing a... A flesh golem. This sounds pretty flavorful to me. Yeah, so it was like, well, I'll get up, probably. If not, I protected this person, so I just I kept taking hit after hit after hit. I was unable to do anything about it other than take it straight to my body, and then they heal me, and I get right back up and start walking towards another enemy. And that was like, you know, I don't have any arcs, but that was one of my prouder moments of the character of like no yeah i totally chose something that's awesome yeah yeah a hundred percent like that is such a cool like that's such a cool thing to do and then like that fight was pretty that was a pretty big boy fight you know um i happened mm -hmm. to be at the time i happened to be i was on a mist walk with uh arden and an another individual that their name is escaping me at the moment um, uh, actually that was afterwards and that was me <laughs> <laughs> it was you, me, and Arden who went on that miswalk. The land shark was before. The, uh, oh, the you're talking. Was oh, you're that. talking was about the... when we were going to like that misty oasis with the box. Um, was it that land yeah, shark it was, fight? It was, it was, yes, that land shark fight. Oh, and we had to get like the poison sack out of the thing. Yep, that was the one. Oh, that was the one okay. Where I was like my arm's gone. Guess I'm just oh, gonna yeah. keep dying until people win. Oh yeah, because they no. The, oh yeah, because that other big fight was the was the things that were like underneath the gargoyle yeah. place. Yeah, and then it was we... like the uh, the the lurker beneath or something like that. Yeah, yeah. No, it was you tentacle. And Arden were on that 
on that uh I was like that, uh miswalk. I was like I thought it was you but you were probably at that big fight and is what I what my thought process was. Yeah. Um, nope. I, I, I was with you on that. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun miswalk. Uh, yes, it was. Yeah, fighting miss beetles. It's always fun. Uh I need to do more of that like just sh like one of the things that I haven't done a whole lot with like I'm at the 7 year mark and I'm just now finishing my elders, and I'm just now finishing my pathway, mostly because of the Great Plague. Uh, right, right, right. Um, but also because I didn't That's really. Great voice for yeah. <laughs> I didn't really take the time to like go out of my way to do things for myself. Um, I always just right. was like, I'm happy. I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy to be LARPing. And I like, didn't really explore Arthur and I didn't really explore like what Arthur wanted to do. I didn't go up to plot marshals and be like, I want to do this. That wasn't like a thing that I previously did. And, right. um, now that I've been getting older and like wanting to engage more, I've like started pursuing those things. And that was like, I think that was like my first step was like, Hey, I want to go on this miswalk to do a thing explicitly for Arthur. And yeah. that was, like, an example of how I've gotten kind of engaged in the game more. And then what I wanted to know from you was, what do you think that somebody who's just starting playing Shifted Lands could do to engage more with the game themselves? Um, I, If it's not finding a faction that you like, uh, like, with me and the Paladin Order, I've already feel like I'm pretty, like, I'm locked into the world. I have a, a thing to do. If it's not that, um, I feel like a really good way to kind of lock yourself in is come in to the game, not with a super specific thing, because the way that LARPs work, sometimes there's, it doesn't work that way, or there's, it takes time, stuff like that, so you don't want to like discourage yourself, but come in with like some sort of vague general goal that you think that would be really cool for your character. Um, I've seen somebody uh, in the Discord who's been building his character talk about he, uh, he he asked if it was possible to make spells, like to create new spells. And yeah. I saw something about it. It's it's not necessarily a no, but it's not necessarily a yes either. Yeah, that's a really cool goal to come in with. Is like my my guy is a mage who wants to make a name for himself, being like. I'm putting spells into other people's books that are mine. Like, that is my creation. Yeah. Um, and, like, that is a... Because then you come in, you start asking questions. Yeah. How do I make my own spells? Have you heard of anybody who's done it before? Where can I find them? Because like, that really gets you... And there's, there's precedent for that in the game, too. Like, there's... Uh, if you actually go look at the alchemy list within the game, if you, like, find the old rulebook, which is, like, kind of tough to access. But I think mm -hmm. it should be in the new rulebook, too. Um, but the... Uh, there's a... There's a alchemy, a rank... I think it's a rank 2, that's called Max's... A uh, herbal pesticide, or something. Oh, cool! Uh, and it's named after the person who researched it, which is Max. I believe that you've met Max before. I have, yeah. Yeah, so like that's like how he and but that's like permanently in the in the rulebook now, right? And that's a thing he did through research, a ton of research and applying, um, and t time spent. And so like you can do things like that. Like there's precedence for it. Like uh. And it's just like how old D and D had that, like I think it was like a seven council wizard, like seven wizards that were on like a council and they made all these spells, and that's why you have like Dumbledore's X of Thingy-Bob or whatever spells in D and D. Right. Yeah. Um, like we big, have Bigby's hand and stuff like that. Yeah, like we have random. We have a thing like that called like. <sighs> It's like Rumpledorf's Random Rift or something is like a, the name of a ritual. <laughs> and that's one thing that people were like, well, no, but also yes, is because the spells are super balanced to, like, they've they've had a lot of discussion on them. And, like, generic mm -hmm. spirit and sorcery spells are, like, kind of, that's, like, a big change. But there are mechanics, and I know people who are actively researching rituals to create new rituals. And that is, like, a thing. Like, people act... Like, that's part of the game. Like, when you go read the ritual thing, it literally says, it's possible to create new rituals. So, 
he was vague enough in his understanding of I want to accomplish this goal that it caught a, a part of the game that's like already like yes you can go do that right and it was yeah, for sure as opposed to like if I wanted to make a really specific sorcery spell that does this like that would have been a hard no but if you're vague enough you catch um, a lot of parts of the game that you might not have caught if you were specific with like what your goal was mm -hmm. And I feel like it also gets you really engaged with the rule set, too, because then you start to look over every aspect of the skills that I feel like, uh, like, attach or are related or, like, and what, what have you. And it gets you not only engaged with the way that the game works, but uh, in-game, it gets you engaged with looking into how the world around you functions. Yeah. Like, that a lot of people yeah that's like a really good point where it's like creating a ritual and then from there it's like well what is a ritual how do i cast a ritual and then that gets you to like uppers like upper magic mm -hmm. pools and then you're like oh well an upper magic pool how do i get that well oh well you need a focus for that and then suddenly you're like three different pages on in the rule book um mm -hmm. and it was of no and it's like exciting to learn that stuff because you're because you, you care about it yeah, it's for it's furthering you towards this this goal that you've kind of given your and you know that kind of stuff changes organically as a character. You might come in being like, I want to create ritual magic, and then eventually be like, I actually want to become a dragon and also blow things up with magic. But like <laughs> yeah. that initial goal is kind of what hooks you into the world and like drags you in. Yeah, uh, it's a motivation for your character. I think that's very uh, important. Um, I, I think so too. I when I watched, I I was a big, fan, or I still am a big fan of Matthew Colville and his YouTube series about like how to DM Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. And every time he brings up a character, he's always like, "What is your motivation?" And it doesn't have to be anything complex at all. It just has to be what motivates me, and that can change dramatically, really quickly. But as long as you have the first one which can be almost anything like I want money or I want to protect right. like I got a it could be something from your backstory like uh I was a farmer and now uh my I need to send it now I need to go try and sell my my wares in Sentinel and so now I'm mm -hmm. a person walking into Sentinel and then suddenly I'm swept up in all these adventures right, right like you yeah. just need a point A and then you organically will grow to point B and then organically grow to point C. But that, that first push, that first motivation is like so important. And I wish I had that when I first started playing. Um, Cause I'm just now discovering like Arthur's motivations and stuff. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I completely agree with you. I think it's a very good, important thing to, to start out with. And it really does help game flow. So, did you have any closing thoughts? Uh, we're coming around the uh, forty-minute mark here, so we've got like we've got you know four or five minutes left. Do you have anything that you specifically wanted to talk about? Anything you want to get off your chest? Um, I definitely think for people who are new entirely to LARPing, like I know that I'm new to this game. I'm definitely not new to LARPing in general. Um, I th I think one thing. One thing that a lot of us get uh, like hung up on early on, especially like the day and age that we live in now, is all the fantasy movies and fantasy video games that we play. There's a lot of like, I'm the main dude, I'm super cool, but like I'm coming in and the character is already kind of fleshed into the world and stuff like that, and feeling like um, when you first walk into your first game of your first LARP, you need to have this full decked out costume and like 17 pages of backstory and these super expensive nice weapons and stuff and while all that kind of stuff is really cool and fun and i 100 percent get the appeal of them that's not at its base what larp really is like larp is a game to get involved with but it, it helps you make friends and it's something really cool to do and so i definitely say um while I encourage getting your stuff figured out and figuring out what you want with your character and stuff, I think it is far more important to just attend your first game 
with an open mind and be like, just go with the intent to have fun. You don't have to go in with like, I'm going to set up 95 connections and immediately be rolling down the pathway to like have a cool storyline. It's like, just come to have fun. Yeah. Like just it, show up in whack, wacky bats. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can show up in uh, like a t-shirt and jeans. People are going to get you set up. And they're gonna make sure you understand everything, and people are gonna make sure you have a fun time. Like, there's don't don't stress your out yourself out so much that you ruin your first experience because you're not perfectly where you wanted your character to be. Feeling like you're a, a fifth level D and D character rolling in, like just come come to play a game, and everything else will come afterwards. Yep, and that kind of goes back to what I was talking about with motivations, where if if you were listening, you don't have to have a motivation. I'm just suggesting that there's one. <laughs> but like showing up because you want to just show up and play is a is like the best reason to show is like the best reason mm-hmm. to LARP. And then like yeah. maybe on your second or your third game is when you start really thinking about that. You your backstory. I know people who I've had friends that I've like invited to play and they've came and played. And they just showed up. They didn't have a character sheet. They didn't have a build in mind. They didn't have a thought process. They were just like, my friend says, come do this thing. It'll be fun. And they showed up and they had, they told me that they had lots of fun like that. And that's Mm -hmm. all LARP really needs to be at the end of the day. Right. Well, especially if it's your first LARP ever, you can plan left and right. You can read all the rule books. You can figure out exactly what character sounds incredibly cool to you. You could show up and try the mechanics and not actually enjoy how they play. You could be like, oh, man, throwing packets for spells, it just isn't my thing. I can't aim for shit. You know what's really <laughs> yeah. cool, though? Blasting people over the head – or not over the head, obviously, rules, but, like, blasting people with uh, a giant sword. Like, that – I tried that once, and it, it like, lit me up. Like, yeah. so, you know – Get a little like, tingle in the back out. of my school. <laughs> yeah. So, like, don't don't kill yourself trying to – 100% ace pinpoint this dude or, or person or whatever you're building. Your character. Like, come, yeah, just like come in to play and see what you like and then go from there. Like, don't, yeah. I, I, I don't want anybody coming in to any LARP ever, no matter what game it is. So dead set on, I'm going to do this. Then find out that they don't like that and it ruins their experience. Yeah. And then uh, that would, uh, I believe Arden gave some really solid advice too with stuff like that, which was like, uh, rent weapons. Don't buy a forty dollar sword if this is your first LARP ever. Don't buy a forty dollar sword. Show up to your first event just because, like, you know, every YouTube video ever for LARPing says, "Oh, like, check out these cool swords. Get this latex <laughs> sword." Um, what yeah. what first sword you're gonna use? Like, that's like one of the clickbaits I've seen on YouTube. But yeah. where it's like, oh, what, what should you get for your first sword? And then you show up and you're like, yeah, I guess I'm a mate. I really freaking hate swinging this sword. I'd much rather throw spell packets or vice versa, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, that was something that he brought up, which is like, I spent 150 bucks on a spear and then showed up. And then I ran into what you've ran into, which was two-handed fighting is a very unique fighting style. Mm-hmm. And I was like, ah, this is not for me. And now I've spent 150 bucks on something I was yeah. not here. And it's that same sentiment, but transfer it to your character. Like, maybe you think you want to play this dark, edgy guy that doesn't talk to people and is super quiet. And then you show up to game and you're mm-hmm. like, man, I wish I could talk to people, but my character wouldn't do that. It's like, don't limit yeah. yourself like that, you know? Just show up to your first thing, yeah. pick a race that looks cool. And then we have, not only do we let you borrow weapons your first game and rent them afterwards the same thing mm-hmm. applies to costuming they have tons of costuming back there you can show yes, up for free your first game with jeans and a t-shirt and a water bottle and we have everything that you could possibly need to just like jump in and have fun and yeah, everything else yeah, comes well, after that, that. Yeah, exactly 100 percent. come have a good time Figure out what you want. Don't pigeonhole yourself and don't blow a bunch of money before you're you know what you want. One hundred percent. All right. Well, I couldn't think of a better message to send us off with. Honestly, that is a really 
thank you so much for your time here, Curtis. Um, if you guys ever get the chance to run into uh, Minus, have a cool mime conversation with him. <laughs> He's around. He's the big, clanky, shiny one. Yep, you can't miss him. Uh, which is funny, because you'll hear him probably first before you see him. Oh, absolutely. Not only do I have all the metal, I'm also covered in bells. Yes, sir. Well, th thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you're interested in the Sentinel Path that he was talking about, we have a video on that. Um, and uh, feel free, if this is the first video you're seeing, feel free to go look at like Shifted Lands 101, where you can just jump right in from there. Thank you guys for your time, and have a good day.